In this English lesson, I wanted to help you learn the English phrase to bugger off. Now, this is definitely an informal phrase. You wouldn't use this in a formal situation. But you, when you say someone is going to bugger off, it means that they are going to leave. And it usually means that you probably didn't want them to leave. A good example would be this. If I had a car accident, if someone hit me, I wouldn't want the other guy to bugger off. I would want that person to stay until the police come. And this does sometimes happen. Sometimes people have a car accident and the person who hit them will bugger off. They'll just drive away. And if the police do catch them, they'll get in lots of trouble. I think having a dash cam is a good way to catch people on camera after a car accident before they bugger off. The other phrase I wanted to help you learn today is the phrase to do bugger all. So if someone does bugger all, it means they haven't really done anything. And again, this is a very informal phrase. Um, but if I came home from work, let's say I'm working on a project with another teacher and we are supposed to be doing it together and I do all the work. I might come home to Jen and say, um, oh, today Joe didn't do bugger all on the project. He just sat around and talked while I did all the work. So when you do bugger all, it simply means that you aren't doing anything when you're supposed to be doing some work. So to review, to bugger off means to leave. Um, and the accident example is probably the best one. Um, if I was to get in an accident, I wouldn't bugger off and I wouldn't want the other person to bugger off either. And to do bugger all simply is a very crude way, a very informal way to say someone is doing nothing. Uh, Jen would get really mad at me in the summer uh, if she was working hard and I didn't do bugger all, she would be like, get to work. We got to sell these flowers. But hey, let's look at a comment from a previous video. This comment is from Gabriella. Hope I'm remembering that right. Hello, Bob. This way of teaching by telling your life story is simply fantastic. Thank you. And then a big wave. And my response, you're welcome, Gabriella. So thank you for that comment. Yeah, I do enjoy talking about myself. And I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad that you all enjoy uh, listening to me. So first of all, I wanted to mention something about, again, my life. Can you hear the wind chimes? I don't see them, but there's definitely wind chimes here. Anyways, the other day I was bringing my son to a friend's house. That friend lives way down this road. You can see my van there, but that was the other day. And I noticed on this side of the road that there was all kinds of new houses that I have never, I had never seen before. So I feel like this subdivision just showed up. Like, I swear, first of all, I don't think I've been down this road for two or three years. Um, and I think that the last time I drove down this road, I don't think these houses existed. I think they were all built probably during the pandemic uh, or maybe a year after it but they looked really new. And I wanted to show you, this is what we call a duplex. So one house is on this side and one house is on the other side. So this garage door belongs to one person. This garage door belongs to another person and they aren't attached between. So it's one building right here, but there are two houses in this building. So there's a wall down the middle separating the two houses and you would either live, live on one side or the other side of the duplex. We sometimes, I think, also call it a semi, um, but uh, in my mind, this would be called a duplex. So uh, typical small Canadian homes. These are probably single family dwellings for people that have one or two kids. I'm not sure these houses would be big enough if you had a family uh, of five, if you had five kids, um, or they might simply be for people who are um, empty nesters. An empty nester is someone whose kids have all moved out. So they would probably be the right size for that. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll give you a look at the Canadian post office boxes here. This is where you would get your mail. Uh, and then I'll say bye. Thanks for watching. See you in a couple days with another short English lesson. Bye.